Here's on King James. Well, I think it's immense pressure for him because of who he is, meaning how he is. And allow me to explain this, Skip. LeBron James is a two-time champion. He's a four-time league MVP. Um, at the end of the day, he'll probably belong on the Mount Rushmore of NBA icons. From a talent perspective, he may be top two all time ever. We all know this. But at the same time, he is a guy who is known as King James with 31.1 million followers. And dare I say, if he loses again in the NBA Finals, because he's clearly going back to the Finals for a sixth consecutive season, he might have to change his Twitter name. Because how can you be a king without a crown? That's really what this comes down to. It's not about losing, because last year we don't hold that against him. We don't hold the first loss when he was in Cleveland years ago to San Antonio against him. But at the same time, Steph Curry... He's not coming anymore. He has arrived. He is doing things on such a surreal level that it has, forcing, it has forced LeBron James to take stock. LeBron James commented about Kawhi Leonard and being mentioned in the same, Kawhi Leonard being mentioned in the same breath as him. He's commented about Steph Curry when he elaborated on the definition of what an MVP should be juxtaposed to who the best player in the world is. LeBron James is a businessman. He's not just a basketball player. And yeah, the Nike deal could be speculated to be worth over a half a billion or closing in on a billion dollars. There's Kia. There's abundance of other things that he has done and he has accomplished. And there's no question about it. He's going to make his money. His popularity is going to be what it is. The star that he is will not descend before our very eyes anytime in the foreseeable future because his greatness can't be questioned. But at the same time, because Steph Curry has bursted onto the scene, and it's not only a, two, a reigning two-time league MVP, but he is also the reigning champion right now. If he were to beat LeBron James again, it affects all of those things. Drastically or, ne or drastically negatively, no. But negatively nevertheless, because our attention will be aimed in a different direction other than where it's been all of these years. And if LeBron James doesn't care about anything. He cares about that. I know that for a fact. And so as a result, because of it, other than him chasing his first ever crown, he's under more pressure than ever before. And Skip, I'll drop one other tidbit of information because people have been ignoring what I've been saying. I've hinted around it for months, as you will know. But I'm going to say this again. LeBron James promised the city of Cleveland I'm coming back to bring you that elusive title that has escaped this city since 1964. He never said anything about staying once he does accomplish that. I'm in Miami last week. I'm in Miami a few months ago. Skip Bayless, I'm hearing about a return to Miami. If this man wins, he ain't going nowhere if he loses. But if he wins, his options are open. L.A., but especially Miami, a return to South Beach. Look, man, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot riding on him winning. Losing changes everything because it keeps him there in Cleveland, but more importantly, it keeps him stuck because he knows he can't leave until he fulfills his promise. And if you can't because you're not a champion, that's far worse than just choosing to stay because you want to. It's going gonna, it's gonna to mm. get very interesting. Keep your eyes on it. That word you just used, stuck, that has very negative connotations. You're, you're saying LeBron James is stuck in his home area, not his hometown, obviously, Akron. Well, but, but right? I, is, I, only, I, I only mention the word stuck because <laughs> it's not like he wouldn't choose to stay if he won. But you can do whatever you want and no one has anything to say because you fulfilled a promise. But if you don't fulfill your promise, you can't leave. Because it would be disastrous for him. Disastrous. Could you imagine if LeBron James lost the championship and elected to leave anyway?
Yep. Could you imagine that? No. Nope. I mean, he never, his image would never recover from that. It would never recover well, from we'd, that. Never. We'd have uh, take two on I'm taking my talents to South Beach, <laughs> right? We'd, we'd well, have another one of those nights. Hey, right? yeah, it, it, it would be worse. It would be worse to come back and to make a promise and you don't fulfill it and leave again. So, again, I'm not saying he's going to do anything. I'm saying this is his situation. This is what's going on, and this is what everybody needs to look at because it appears the one person standing in his way is Steph Curry. Losing is bad enough, but losing to Steph Curry? Oh, I, 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 okay. that would be bad. <laughs> that would be bad. Allow me to say, I still haven't gotten over the fact that he left his man Dwayne Wade, I think, high and dry in Miami without him, and you can say, well, Dwayne was... Looked like he was on his last legs at that point. Clearly, that's no longer the case. But not only did he leave Dwayne behind, but he rejoined forces. He realigned himself with an owner in Cleveland named Dan Gilbert, who had not just set the bridge on fire that night that LeBron left the first time, he burned it to the ground. Remember those tweets about LeBron? J just scathing tweets. And I couldn't believe that LeBron would would stoop to work, quote unquote, for that man, though he doesn't literally work for him, but, but just to, to do business with him again. And obviously they just sort of coexist now because deep down, heart of hearts, LeBron wanted to win one for the land. I get that. So to your point, I'm with you. But that only, to your point, increases the pressure on LeBron James right now, right? So it's escalating. Okay. I, I tried to take a little of that pressure off to start the show, but nobody's going to want to listen to me about how the Miami supporting cast were a little, little better than this one because they're more dependable, trustworthy, and proven. But let's forget about all that because the runaway train right now is best supporting cast ever. So can I conclude then? Because all I've ever heard for however many years I've been on the show is LeBron doesn't have enough help. He just still, it's, it's always one excuse after another when LeBron loses. Well, can, can we just clear the decks now of excuses? No more excuses for LeBron James. Is that fair? That, that's where we are right now. He's got his best supporting cast. He's got a coach. I'm not, I'm not saying he handpicked Ty Lue, but, but it's the coach he preferred. Is that fair to say? It's the coach he preferred, yeah. but we also got to take a moment to also, when you point out, first of all, I'm not going to say no excuses with the negativity that you're saying it to because, listen, look, it's not like LeBron James fell off the map. He's still relevant. He's still doing his thing. Uh, but I will say this to you. Skip, we got to take a moment. I got to take a moment to give David Griffin credit. His name doesn't get mentioned enough. Okay. I mean, think about, think, think about it. Amon Shumpert, right, Jay good. Osmond, I'm saying it, it, yeah. it, it, augments, it augments your yeah. point is what I'm saying. Amon Shumpert, Jay Smith, even a guy like Matthew Della Vadova, sure. uh, Timothy Mozkov. And then you go and you pick Channing up Channing Fry. Fry. Yeah. I mean, look, you re-sign Tristan Thompson. Yeah. I mean, everything is in place from, and I, 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 listen, Dan Gilbert, we got on him because that letter was vicious. Yep. There are people in LeBron James' camp that will never get over that. Sure. I don't blame them. I don't people either. like me and uh, you and others will never get over it. But I got to admit, as an owner, my God, has he not cut the check? He's paying. He's cutting the check. <laughs> he's giving them all he's needed. David Griffin is doing a, he's doing a damn good job as an executive. You got the coach and you got the roster. So you're right, but here's what I'm saying to you. He may not have an excuse, but Skip, I got to tell you, the more I'm watching these Cavs, the more of a believer they're turning me into. Okay. Because it's not like, I mean, they are balling. I, the competition has to be taken into consideration, but it's not like they're taking this for granted and they ain't handling their business. They are handling their business and LeBron James handling his business and Iman Shumper was interviewed after the game last night. And they talked about him running up and down the court and how great these guys look. And he said, LeBron, he said, LeBron has been on us yeah. every day, working out, stay in shape, keep your condition up. He's all over us. So LeBron is being every bit the leader that he's supposed to sure. be. And he deserves credit. He just has to close. Okay. He has to close. So let's step back again. 
this new big three, not only are they all healthy, Kyrie's starting to look really healthy, like 100% healthy, but yes, they he is are happy. Legs. Yeah. They appear to be very happy together, the three of them. For the first time, they are clicking and meshing. And the LeBron described by our man Brian Windhorst occasionally as passive aggressive, now he, he's publicly in your face aggressive in his commentary about Steph's MVP, mind. right? He's like going right out there all. saying, wait a second, are you sure, in, in effect, he's saying, you sure I'm not more valuable to my team than Steph is to his team? You know, he deserves to be the best player this year. He got all that, but I'm more valuable. That's the message they're sending. And then he even questioned the veracity of voting Steve Kerr over Terry Stotts as coach of the year. Wow, you are taking them on. So now it's bring it on in the NBA Finals if, in fact, it's Golden State. And I'm going to close with your, po your opening point. If LeBron loses again, that would mean five times in seven tries he would have lost NBA Finals. That is not Mount Rushmore statistics, that, right? That is, that is correct. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. Talent, I, I mentioned Mount no, Rushmore I, I got it. in yeah. terms of talent. Talent. But that two, or five, two, two and five in the finals yeah. is not good. No. It's not good. All right. We move on to somebody that's on a Mount Rushmore potentially in the NFL. Up 84 East, they're not devoid of rings. That would be the New England Patriots. Tom Brady is facing a four-game suspension to start the season. But what are the chances he deflates that suspension and still Ooh, gets to play? I think Skip clever. is a little inflated right now. Oh. 